she was just there giving us um support i guess but my husband was just helping because and and every time the pain coming to i just call him i'm like get over here like get over here it's coming it's coming it's coming so by like um i think by like two 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 o'clock they gave me some pain medication i don't know what it was maybe it was pedosin or um something else but it was just a little bit of drug they put in my uh, iv to like make me it didn't take the pain away it just made me sleep a little bit so i slept for maybe like 15 to 30 minutes and then trust me while i was sleeping i can still feel the pain it's that bad but it wasn't bad yet well to me it was bad it wasn't bad yet because i because you know everybody takes pain a different way our body just deal with pain a different way so by like 3 3 30 4 o'clock it was bad it was like it was fire in my belly it was fire in my back everything was hurting and it wasn't that when they were trying to at the beginning i forgot to tell you guys when they were trying to put the iv it was they could not find my vein so they poked me like five times and i feel like that was the worst thing ever that's why i don't do it at all because needles are not my friend so um when they end up getting it it's getting it in my arm that was over but still my arm and they end up putting it right here i still have the mark i still have the mark right here that thing hurts so bad i could not move my fingers and then and then imagine i couldn't move my finger and then i had to hold the bed every time i had to uh, every time a construction come or i had to hold him so by like um four o'clock i think i told my husband get the nurse i need more pain medication she come back she's like i can't give you pain medications because the baby heart rate is really high um pain medication will not help so i'm like okay uh okay okay and then it just kept going and kept going so i think 15 minutes later i i told my husband to call her again and then he was like no we can't call her again i'm like well at this point i need her I need her. I was getting mad. I was, I was ready to scream. So he's like, "No, they can't give you any pain med medication." And then a few minutes later, I'm like, "You know what? I think I have to poop." But it wasn't poop. He's like, "You sure?" I'm like, "No, I don't think it's poop. I think I have. I I'm ready to push the baby." He's like, "Are oh, you sure?" I'm like, "Yes, I'm sure. I think I have to push the baby." So by like four, four, four thirty, four some, four thirty something. I'm like, yes, I'm ready. So the nurse came. He's like, oh, your doctor is across the wall. He's delivering another baby. He'll be here. I'm like, how long? Because I'm ready to push this baby out, like, right now, right now. And then she's like, "It's he's coming. It's going to take less than a minute. So he ended up coming. He ended up not delivering that baby because the lady had complication. So he ended up coming to my room. They got everything ready, put the gloves on, their robe um, and stuff, and then... And then at that point they turned me on my back. Um, as soon as they turned me on my back, I could not feel any pain anymore. And then and he gave me some some pain medication to numb down there my coochie part. And then um, and I could not feel any pain anymore. So every time I had a contraction, the 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 delivery nurse had to tell me, "Oh, you have a contraction." coming so try to push so i pushed like two times and mind you i had the flu so it was just a whole mess i had the flu i was trying to push out a baby i am in labor it was just terrible so she's like oh it's coming now go ahead pushing them this hand was hurting so i could not hold the bed too hard with it because it was just like oh my god i think i'm gonna die i think i'm gonna pass out through this thing like i don't think it's gonna happen I was thinking all kind of stuff. I think they probably gonna like cut me. And when I got to the hospital, they are they were the one who caught my water. So I'm like, I think they're gonna end up cutting me because if if I have no more water in my belly, which I don't think if that's a thing. I'm like, if I don't have no more water in my belly and then the baby is in distress, I think they're gonna end up cutting me and take the baby, which is a C-section. Now telling the nurse what's gonna happen if there's no more water inside of me. She's like, "No, you're gonna have water. That's not a, um, that's not a problem and stuff." She's like, "You're gonna have the baby." So, um, so I pushed two times, 
in, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, that's not good enough. Even though they were saying, oh, you're doing good, this and that, um, keep going, you're doing good. And then in my head, I think, you know what, forget it. Even if I lose this head, I got to do this shit because I'm in so much pain. So I'm like, okay, it's time to push this baby out. I'm ready. So when my contraction come again, I push really hard. And then he didn't come out. Well, he's, they could see his hair and everything. And then I push again. And then here's the baby. Even my cousin called on the phone. She was she was talking to, to my sister-in-law. She was like, I'm in the elevator. I'm coming up. And then they told her, oh, Emma's having a baby. Now you're just probably going to have to wait a minute. By the time they told her she had to wait a minute, I already had this baby by like 4.45, I think 4.47. The baby was here. They were cleaning him up. And then at that point, I felt like my body was relieved. I was in no more pain, like zero pain whatsoever. And then um, the doctor, they took the baby away. They put him under the 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 hot light thing and done this whole thing was the whole thing was over they cleaned me up and then they give me um like i think i put a big penny ish looking pad thing they give you at the hospital i put it on and then um and then i was laying down they wanted me to do skin to skin because it wasn't the baby's it wasn't that he wasn't breathing at, like it wasn't his respiratory problem but it was i think a lung problem so i had to do skin to skin but at that point um i don't know but i didn't feel like holding the baby i didn't feel like being a part of of his mom at that point maybe it's because i had just pushed him out and i was just too tired and and too emotional so i did it for probably like five to ten minutes and it wasn't working so the nurse took him um they put him in the thing and then they end up um they like if it doesn't um if it's not working, if it's if he's not getting better, we're gonna put him in the NICU um, for today, and then we'll see how tomorrow goes. And then later on, they're like, "Oh, he was still the same." And at that point, they changed me room, and I was getting worse with my flu. Don't mind you, I still have the flu, so I was still getting worse with the flu. I was at that point, I was coughing, and every time I coughed, there was like blood, like, psh, psh, and then. And then my, my lower belly was kind of hurting every time I cough. And then they gave me medication. I was freezing. I've never been so cold in my entire life. And I think it was a fever. I was so cold. So they gave me medications. I fall asleep a little bit. But I keep waking up. And then I wake up. I was asking to go see him. But they wouldn't let me because of the flu. And, um, and my sister-in-law had to, like, go see him or stay with him. And, um, when they told me that he's gonna have to stay, um, overnight in the NICU, like, he wasn't in the room with me at all. I stay in the hospital for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I came home on Wednesday. He still didn't come in my room. I went to see him in the NICU. And then I came home. When I came home on Wednesday, I didn't go back. I went back on Friday. I didn't. I also didn't go back on on Thursday because I I had to. Um, I had to get better before trying to see him. And then even my husband, he had to go get tested to see if he still have the flu, but he didn't. So he could go see him. So he went to see him every day, but I couldn't. So on Thursday I went to see him, but I had to wear a mask and like wash my hands and the gloves and all that kind of stuff. So. I went to see him. He was so little. Like, he was just so tiny. I mean, I will post, post a picture. He looked big in the picture, but he was not big at all. He was born 6.6, 6, 6 pounds and 6 ounces. And, um, like, he was just so tiny. But he was just the cutest baby ever. Like, he's still the cutest baby. And, um, and what else, what else? He ended up coming home on Saturday night. He came home and we were so happy we went to pick him up that night and before we went to pick him up we had to bring the car seat for them to test it so they had to put him in the car seat for i think an hour or more i don't remember but they had to put him in the car seat and if he didn't pass the car seat test he wouldn't be coming home 
And he had in the one while he was in the class that I had they had to check I think they had to check his respiratory or his lung to see how see how he's breathing in the class and stuff. So he passed the test and he ended up coming home on Saturday and when he came home it was it was one of the best days of my life. I was just so happy to see him. I was just so happy to have him here. And then we weren't having people, too many people seeing him because he was born premature. And then we didn't want him to get sick and stuff. So we still had to like keep everybody away. So he was like a month. And now that he's four months, everybody can come see him. Well, not the, at this moment when this virus is going on. But when he was a month people could have come see him and then most of the family members they come by and and they they happy he's just and he was sleeping a lot he was just sleeping most of the day he'll wake up two times to eat or three times and at night three times to eat and then he was just sleeping and here he is he's here oh he's hot he's here Say hi to my friends. Say hi, YouTube. Say hi. Hi, YouTube. He's here. His name is Isa Kariah. Um, the E is for us. Emaya, Emma, and Emaya. Because we are the E family. And Zachariah is from the Bible. I'm here, ladies. I'm here. Yes, this is Zachariah. And he's the most lovable baby. So, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and come back for another video.